Hello, another surprise live because why not? Um, can you let me know if the sound is good? Because I know we had a little issue yesterday. So <clears throat> let me know. Hi, Donna. You just got the brushes yesterday and of course had to use them right away. Love, 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 love them. Donna, thank you so much. And you know what? I'm going to ask if you love them and you have a moment. Um, hey, Laura, um, would you go ahead and give uh, a review on Amazon? I'd appreciate it so much. Friends, let me know. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Um, I'm, I'm testing out. Sounds good to me. Okay, it's loud enough. Adrian, it is um, snowy and weird in Pennsylvania, too. So, okay, Jill. Uh, Laura is one of my best friends. Everybody say hey to Laura. We've been friends since middle school? Earlier? I don't know. Hey. Um, ordered the brushes yesterday. Nancy says love what you do. Yay. Awesome. Okay. Sound is good. <clears throat> Can hear you well. Awesome sauce. Okay, so friends, today here is what we're going to do. Um, and this session is for those who are live with me, but also those who are watching on the replay. We, I, I'm just painting. Did you ever just feel <clears throat> like you wanted to paint, you had no idea what you were going to paint, but you wanted to try really hard to just paint exactly what it is that you want to paint. For me as a creator, I'm always thinking about what do other people want to see? What do other people, what have they been asking me for? Maybe for you, it's, you know, my sister wants me to paint this and so-and-so needs a card and, and that's all lovely and beautiful. And, and we are here on this earth to serve. However, there are moments when you need to take care of you, boo. And so today I felt like I wanted to paint bigger than normal. And I felt like I just wanted to sit down and do some fruits and florals. <clears throat> um, and I get asked every day on this channel, do you just paint florals? So what if I did? No, um, but I always have that in the back of my mind. So anyway, today it's gonna be fruits and florals, watercolor, I'm gonna use all the brushes. I'm just gonna be here to answer your questions, uh, friends on replay, if you've ever had a burning question about watercolor, about art, about uh, anything, you know, making art a career or mindset. Now is your time. Now is your time. Oh, Renda, thank you. She says, subscribe and share, get friends to subscribe. Almost to 100K. We are very, very close to 100K. And I, honestly, that's not why I'm doing these lives this week. I mean, it's a celebratory week. And so I, I just, I have some open space this week to just do what I feel like doing that will help support the launch and support the questions that are coming through and all that. So, um, I love flowers, but I'm up for anything. Don't forget to boop says Sarah chalk. Thank you so much. Yes, friends, uh, go ahead and give this video a boop. If you're having fun so far, that's the little thumbs up. Um, it just like lets the algorithm know that folks need to get here and, and get in on the fun. I'm going to go ahead and switch over the screen to the painting table and we're going to get in on it. So listen, friends, <clears throat> I have a boo-boo, cut my finger. Um, so you're just gonna have to deal with my crazy band-aid. Um, so I'm using Academy today, brand new block. Super dupes, always excited about a brand new block. So I'm just gonna get, they, oh, hi, everything's in my way, go away. Um, I'm trying to be cute with my setup and it's just in my way, so we're gonna move it. Got to remove this liner page. You can keep this, make some art on it, whatever, whatever. I feel like making plums today, maybe figs, who knows? <clears throat> Let's see where the day takes us. Um, hands on, Christy, any chance of a hands on event this summer? Well, I hadn't thought about that, but you know, you just got to put the bug in my ear, as my mom would say, or my Nana would say. <coughs> Spray down that palette. Okay, so I'm gonna start wet on dry, which means my page is dry, my brush is gonna be wet. 
Okay, thank you, Maureen, from the Boop from North Carolina. Appreciate that so much. Fruits and florals are great. Um, first time on your live coming from Illinois, new to watercolor. Cheryl, welcome. Everybody say hello to Cheryl. Welcome her. It's first time. Love that. Um, I think I'm going to sketch with my travel brush first. I'm just going to just pull up something light and dingy from the palette. <clears throat> and let's get a little bit of a composition going here. Friends, I did a video recently where I was sketching cute stuff. Do you remember the bee? The bee that was the failure and the flamingo. I'm going to kind of apply that same technique where I'm going to sketch with my, with my brushes here. I'm going to, we're going to do some, um, some figs and some plums and I'm just kind of getting in that general sketchy shape. I am not working from any kind of, um, inspiration photo. I'm just, I'm just sketching. I'm holding this brush really far down on the ferrule, friends. Um, and that gives me a lot of control. <clears throat> the block is 15 by 10.2 inches. Isn't that wild? That's an interesting, arbitrary kind of um, measurement. Let's do some kumquats because you know how I love my kumquats. We'll get those in there. I'm going to go full to the edge. I'm going to do what I don't normally do. Get some leaves in here. And I'm just mapping out, friends, with just some dingy color on my brush. What does a plum even look like? I painted plums um, a few years back. Oh, gosh, quite a few years back. And it, to date, is still one of my favorite paintings. So I'm trying to remember... And don't worry, these outlines are just, they're going to go away as, as we navigate this painting. <clears throat> they're going to go away. Excited to watch. Hey, Daniel. Um, yay. Kumquat. <laughs> uh, all right, let's see here. Let's do some more kumquats up here. And just, this is Lucy Goosey mapping out thinking about my composition. What do I want my main kind of focal point to be? I don't know. Um, a flower. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. Let's see. I'm just making, this is the center of my flower, all these little loopy dupes here. And then I'm just going to make some little cuppy type shapes on the uh, front and the sides. Right? And then a few more just petally moments until we like really open up the petals here. And this is just, this is sketchy friends. This is mapping out. This is knowing that not all of these lines are going to be in the final painting. So see right here, this one is like, um, a petal that's curving up towards me, right? These are kind of curving, they're kind of like this, right? This one probably is curling as well. Um, and this, what do we wanna do here? Maybe a little curling, a little side view action as well. Create some dimension and then just some flat ones that are just peeking out. That's fun. I'm kind of down with that. Now we need a big leaf. I'm feeling we need a big leaf that's going to kind of interrupt into fruit land here. So can you kind of see the beginnings of that leaf that's just going to interrupt? Maybe it'll curl up into here. Yes. Now I'm just using all of my dingy colors all over my palette. That's a really exaggerated leaf, but I kind of like that. It's large, it's almost a little um, fantastical. Um, I've, oh, I've got almost a full on perpendicular hold on that brush now, friends. Art has no borders, but interestingly, art supplies do. Oh, we're getting poetic, I love it. Hello from South Africa, double to mo. 
Uh, Mary Testa. Hello, Mary. Love seeing your name pop up. Let's do kind of a side view leaf here. <clears throat> Another little leaf. Let's just do like a trio maybe. I haven't mapped out a composition like this in a long time and it feels very, very good. I just want to say. Let's get these plums kind of connected by some branches. I don't know how plums grow, but today they're going to be connected by some branchy moments. All right, let's just be here for it. Same thing goes for these kumquats. Let's establish that there's going to be like a branchy type situation happening. Full on perpendicular hold on that brush using the very tip this travel brush, I'm so in love with it. It comes to the most delicate, fine. Can you see that? Um, no. Comes to the most delicate, fine point. Look at that. Very, very, very uh, particular point by design. <clears throat> All right, let's 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 just examine, evaluate. Why is the paint palette color in the order they are in? That is a great question. The answer is that I wanted to completely um, rearrange your um, kind of assumptions about the way a palette should be designed. I wanted you to see colors next to each other and um, kind of enforce a, a curiosity that might not have been otherwise enforced if I, you know, did the whole yellow, green, blue, purple, pinks, reds, you know, siennas, that kind of order, right? <clears throat> and so I find some of these juxtapositions to be very interesting when it comes to mixing. So for example, I would love you to mix um, the, the brown and the green here into one another, mix the brown and the red, and you won't believe what you get mix the the hot pink and the peach you would think that the pink would just cancel out the peach it doesn't you won't you'll just be shocked and amazed um even mixing these two greens which are seemingly similar but light years apart um mixing together this buffy ivory color and the fierce oh my gosh so that's the reason why yeah yep 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 All right, evaluating, evaluating. I think we need more plums here and then, um, and they're gonna go behind these leaves. All right. And then maybe a few little teeny kumquats coming out and around. They're too similar in size. Another little hint of branch happening really tiny one here i feel like i want a strawberry anybody feel up for a strawberry because i do my i have a a strawberry short that has gone a little a little viral on this channel and on the youtube channel and uh it's been fun the comments i find that the more views um any one of my videos gets the crazier the comments get and like some of the comments are like what planet do those look like strawberries on and then somebody was like i really like these but why did you use blue instead of black for the outline and why are the strawberry blossoms blue instead of yellow? And like all these questions. And I love answering these questions because it gives me opportunity to um, shake up their, their assumptions about what something looks like. Super fun. But anyway, I was reading some more of the comments this morning and I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, I need to paint some more strawberries because they, they felt good. They felt good under, underhand on the paper for sure. And I think they're going to work well kind of with the, the color um, story that I'm thinking of here. For sure. And how about some cascady leafy things coming down here and interrupting 
the the strawberry swag that might be fun let's take a look so question you do use strawberries it is yeah um I love how you did that outline first with the paint much better than using pencil it's fun um, it's a little scarier because with pencil you'd be like well I can erase and I can edit um, but yeah I feel like it's a great way to um, kind of test your confidence and 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 also just test yourself you know just just put that confidence in yourself that you can totally can totally roll with the the imperfectness of of this kind of a start right so speaking of starts, let's go ahead and get one. Let's get a start. I'm gonna spray these down again. I'm gonna go in with the three quarter inch dagger, part of the new set. Hi, Stacy, you're new here. I'm so glad you're here. Jill says more flowers. Thank you, Jill. Stacy, everybody welcome Stacy. Give her some love and tell her that she is in a good place and she can trust us and have fun here. So we're so glad you're here. Um, <laughs> all right, all right. Let's do this. So I'm gonna get some deep purple going on my mixing tray, a little bit of that pink, a little bit of blue and a Scotia brown, and we're gonna just hit it. We're gonna hit this first. We're gonna go in at an angle and just come on in. A little bit of that brown on the tip that I didn't actually mix in, I think is gonna be interesting. My brown is extremely warm, extremely warm. So it um, almost has some pink undertones, which is so exciting and fun in the painting process. All right, let's go in and get this plum, a little bit more pink going on in this one. What I love about this brush is how it just attacks shapes. It makes creating volume in, in a shape so much more effortless than if you're trying to do this with say, just a round brush. Um, you can get so much more nuance in your first layers um, with this brush, which I love. Just editing that shape a little bit. I'm gonna go over here with some saturated purple and also edit this shape a bit. Make it a little more round. Love, love, so good, so fun. Get into it. I'm going underneath here, keeping in mind that I do have a leaf and I'm trying to maintain kind of the overlap. So I'm cutting around it. Look at how we can cut so effortlessly just change the angle, kind of change the um, the curve of your hand, the flick of a wrist, and you're golden. Let's throw a little bit of blue in this plum. Where's my glue? Here's my glue. I'm gonna get wet and wild here. Look at that, so lovely. I do go in dark right off the bat a lot of the times. If that freaks you out, makes you feel uncomfortable, you don't have to do it, you can build up more slowly than I do. That's gonna be a kumquat, because it needs to be. It just needs to be. Let's get a little, I wanna mix up. My palette makes a lovely orange. It's not um, like a zingy traditional orange but it does make a lovely orange, but you've got to get a clean area. You can't have anything dirtying up the orange. So I kind of do something I rarely do, which is clean out my palette. So I cleaned out that area and I'm combining the fluorescent yellow, the peach, the pink and the red. And there she is, gorgeous, creamy, lovely orange. I'm just gonna put one stroke, leaving some margin in between the kumquat and the plum here. And then I'm gonna go start applying that approach, just covering part of each kumquat with this orange. All right, you'll see what's gonna happen here. At least what I think is gonna happen. 
I'm going to go in with my filbert. I want a little bit more, um, a smaller brush here, a little bit more control. And then I'm just going to stroke in some straight up fluorescent yellow. Don't worry about the fact that I'm not covering these outlines yet, but I'm kind of taking that fluorescent yellow, the moisture of it, and letting it blend the orange that I laid down first. Lovely. And then you could even make some of these. I'm just doing some dry brush fluorescent here, scrubbing it on and start full on fluorescent on some of these kumquats. Why not? Be a fun base. Oh, don't forget this little bad boy. Nice and bright. You're getting that complementary contrast there um, <clears throat> between the blue and the orange and the yellow and the purple, which is super fun to see that happening. Let's go in to the bottom of this fig with some green and then right next door ooh, that is not what I thought would happen there um, with some purple so a swirl of purple right around it rinse the brush rinse rinse really well and then kind of blendy blend and there's the start of the that's a bottom of a fig ah thank you Stacy Uh, Irene says, I love using Fierce and Sweet together on the brush. It looks gorgeous. Yes, it does. Would you ever have thought to have more than one color on my, would never have thought to have more than one color on my brush at a time until I watched one of your videos. Well, amen and hallelujah. Um, I have your, Jinky Dog says, I have your first set of brushes. Are, the, um, are there new brushes in this set? So I am working, I've been using some of the new, hey. Some of the new brushes the free from fear brush collection the link is in the description here um officially released yesterday although it was kind of out there kind of hiding on um on amazon for about a week prior but this is the new set eighth inch dagger um cat's tongue number six number 12 round um a triple zero detail brush a three quarter inch dagger and then a number six filbert, all different brushes, very, very different personalities, um, which is great. Okay, where was I? What was I using? Filbert, I was using a filbert. Filbert um, is great. You'll hear it a lot for floral, right? Um, which it is, it's fantastic for floral, but I also find the filbert to be pretty magical when it comes to um, wanting to lay down solid strokes with more control. Because of its shape, it's even stiffer um, than other brushes that are made out of nylon, let's say. It's quite stiff, which actually is going to give you a huge amount of control when you're laying down the color, um, which can be really uh, amazing when you are mapping out a piece. All right, here's a wild, wild rendition of a, um, a sliced fig. Wilds, we're getting wilds. Uh, I'm gonna put a little bit of green. And then we're gonna toss a little bit of pink back up in here to purple this up ever so slightly, maybe a little blotting just to keep things toned down. And then I'm gonna wet this pink. This pink went on a little bit more dry than I had thought it would, but that's okay. I just want a little more blendy blend action going on. Keep those questions coming. If you are Team Replay, head into comments, let us know, um, hashtag Team Replay and be sure to get in on the questions. Ask your questions, don't be bashful. I read all your comments. Um, it's a lot harder for me these days to get back to every comment, but I do my very best. Um, if, you, if you have a burning question that you really feel needs to be answered, your best bet is email at this point, but then I imagine my email will become harder to keep up with, but um, I'm, I will do my utmost to address your questions so please keep them coming the other thing that is just lovely and wonderful about this community um, if you have a question open it up to the community as well 
Uh, we are a community full of amazingly gifted, experienced painters. Um, in addition to beginners. So get in there and ask them your questions as well. One of my favorite things about existing here um, on YouTube. So, all right, let's see. Let's take a look. Um, paper, pens, and coffee. He's getting hers on Friday. No rigor in the new set. Uh, no, no. Um, Uh, let me see here. I'm just reading questions. There's a liner in the first set. Correct. Correct. There's a liner in the first set. Do you deliver to the UK? Some folks in the UK have been able to access this brush. Um, some have not seen it come up yet in their searches. Uh, so it's right now things are a little volatile in terms of like figuring all that all out because it is quite new at this stage. So um, I am working on that and keeping an eye on that and doing all I can to the, you know, what limited resources I have with Amazon to get, you know, to get these coming up in searches as, as widely available as possible. So I added a little bit of the pink there in certain areas. And then with a clean brush, I went right next to the pink and kind of washed it out. This one got a little out of control. This right here is exactly what I was going for, that lovely kind of ombre. Let's see if I can do that here. Keep things in control. There we go, that worked out. And just push it back, push it back. So you can keep that nice ombre going. Add a little bit more pink here. And then remember you can use this opportunity to kind of carve out the petals that lie underneath. And let's do a little on the base here. I'm using the number 12 round now, which comes to an elongated, very fine point. some of that orange get that into the middle here some more of the fluorescent straight up some of the fluorescent there I'm gonna use some here Ooh, very nice Oh boy, I'm hitting the zone. I'm hitting the zone. I gotta keep talking. <laughs> you know the zone. It's where that other part of your brain just kicks in and says, yeah, good luck trying to function as a human. You're in paint Paintville now. The page is very damp here and I'm taking advantage of that adding some chunkier linear detail here knowing that it's going to diffuse beautifully because I'm applying it to the damp page oh yeah good good fun oh Creekside homeschoolers I'm so glad Hey, are you the one that emailed me about lessons for kiddos? Or am I mixing you up with someone? It's very, very possible I'm mixing you up. But I, I've been getting a few requests lately for some kid-friendly content. And one request was specifically from a homeschooler. So let me know if that was you. And I will go ahead and address that publicly. All right, friends, just to review quickly, I do still see some questions running through comments. <clears throat> I want to make sure they get addressed. This is the new set. There is no liner brush in this new set. You do have the detail brush here, um, but how it differs from the liner is um, the length. It's almost half, the liner's almost double long. See that? Almost double long. So, 
they really are different from one another. This um, detail brush, the triple zero, is going to give you those wispy, fine, lyrical lines, but you're not going to get quite as lyrical and elegant, I guess, um, as with the liner. No, not me. Okay. Um, yes, the first stock is uh, the first set is going to be back in stock. We're hoping by the end of the week, um, but you know we're not a hundred percent sure. But we're hoping. Going in and adding a little bit of red right here where these three petals meet. It is damp there, so I know it's going to take beautifully. I'm going to add a little bit of red here. At the base of this big petal, I'm going to add it here where I first started and just let it be. I'm not going to try to over blend it because, again, the page is damp. I could stand for a little bit of low contrast texture, meaning low contrast, meaning I've got fuchsia and I'm putting red on top of fuchsia. So there's not a big like value difference, light and dark difference. Uh, it's just adding a little something, something. It's hard to put your finger on. And we love that. All right, going in here, I am using the, the new cat's tongue. Notching in between this petal, this petal, this one here, this little intersection here. Rinsing my brush really well. And I'm going to I'm gonna kind of back in. I didn't rinse it well enough. That's okay. I'm going to back into what I just did. See how I'm backing into it and pushing against it. I'm going to get a little pink on my brush and back in some more. Look at that, I'm backing in. And by backing in and not stroking down, you have a little bit more control over the ombre, the dark to light effect, right? A little bit more control. Now I can push down a little bit, push back. Look at that. That worked beautifully. Back it up, back it in, let me begin. I came to win. I don't know the words. That's a sin. Okay. But anyway, you're never going to forget. Back it up in your painting, in the context of your painting. You're never going to forget it now because you're going to hear my horrible rap. I don't know what my deal is with horrible rapping lately. And uh, I am uh, referring to my Fresh Prince of Bel Air hot take in shorts recently. Uh, I also posted that one on Instagram if you haven't seen it and you feel like you need a good laugh. Yeah, go get it. Go get it. All right, let's talk about my love affair with this um, cat's tongue. The way that I designed it is that the um, the point on this lovely is extremely, um, okay, maybe not extremely. I, I, I feel like it borderlines extreme. It's, a, it's, a, it's very elongated. Okay, let me show you. Compared to others that I've seen. See how elongated that point is? Let's compare it to the cat's tongue that had in my first set, which I, I would call more of a blunt tip. Very useful. This one gives you more romantic lyrical marks. This one gives you more like one stroke controlled marks. Just so fun. I love all the personalities of paintbrushes. They sing when you use them in the way that they were meant to be used. They create magic when you push boundaries with them. Mm. All right. Back it in, back it in, back it up. Gonna lift a little bit of this peach out. more blending all right all right a little bit of pink here i'm leaving some margin in most of the spots a little bit of pink and then that's pretty light but we're gonna blend it out and i'm not backing this one up because i'm not dealing with a really strong color and i'm not after a really strong ombre either A little bit of red. Rinse 
really well, then come back and back it in and back it in. You feel like you're um, releasing too much color, dab your brush on a paper towel and then get back to backing it in. So fun. All right, let's take a look at comments. If you are team replay, friends, let us know what questions do you have? Are you enjoying the session? Do you feel like this composition's working? Do you have questions about what I'm doing and why the heck I'm doing it? Do you have questions about the brushes? Let those questions roll. I wanna hear them. I'm getting some of these strawberry initial, initial layers in. I don't want my strawberry to be fully ripe. So I'm getting that accomplished by adding some yellow, being careful not to over blend or we'll get too much of an orange vibe, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but <clears throat> all right, Stacy is a seasoned card maker, love it. Let's take a look here. Renda says, Fresh Prince was so fun, Miss Christy. You rocked it, girlfriend. Well, thank you. I um, love your sing song moment. Oh my gosh, I have so many sing song moments. It's embarrassing. Stacy, I think someone said just get paint on paper. One of the best things that you can do, um, I just posted this on TikTok. It's called a brush stroke pattern. And, um, you know, you could go creep on me on TikTok even without having a, an account if you don't have one. And it was literally from like yesterday or the day before or maybe Saturday. I don't know. I can't remember. It was very recent. And it's where you just, it's, it's, um, it's an approach to just getting paint on paper right and you just make a stroke and you make that same stroke evenly spaced all over your paper um so it's a way of getting you out of that like i really want to paint but i don't know what to paint so i'm not going to try it kind of mindset where you're kind of looping around this this desire but not really acting on it which by the way that is not a criticism that is um, the human condition when it comes to starting new creative journeys. So don't be hard on yourself, but um, go ahead and give that a look and give it a try because I think it might um, give you a good kick in the pants to try, you know, get some brush to paper. Got, went really intense here, which I like. I'm just going to pick up some of this excess um, pigment just to reveal some interesting textures there. Actually, it's revealing some really interesting. I wonder what would happen if I blotted. I'm not a big paper towel blotter, but this is a damp paper towel. It's actually nice. The paper stained a little bit. I kind of dig it. Wow, this, this painting is, is like high chroma. High chroma. Woo! I'm here for it. Let's go back. Actually, let's get, where'd she go? Where is my, yeah, my flat wash brush. I love her, incredibly versatile. She doesn't look it, but let me tell you what about this bad boy. So versatile. You can use the edges, the corners, perpendicular holds, just, well, let me show you. <clears throat> All right, let me get some green in here. I'm going to I'm going to mix something that's more toned down. We've got a lot of like really zingy colors going on here. Okay, I don't really want brown, but I know where I'm headed with this, or at least I think I do. Um So I want to get something in here that feels No, that's too blue for the love, Christy Rice. Get it together. All right, now lots of water in here. Rinsing, let's get into this buff. All right, now watch what we can do. All right, that's loading of a single color. Let's get some of that on and let's dab into that bright green and we've got a double load. 
Hello, Lava. Oh, I love you. I love you. You're so pretty. This brush makes me feel good about myself. And look how quickly I was able to, to kind of get that base layer down. And then you can go in and refine, right? I think it's really effective as a more muted situation given all that's going on around. Cutting in, look how effortlessly this cuts in to areas. Like look at that, Just I am just rotating this brush between my fingers, lightening up on the pressure when I'm in a tight spot and increasing my pressure when I want more coverage. Like right now I'm really lightening my pressure because I'm just delicately kind of filling in tight areas here. Look at that, isn't that lovely? This brush is a lifesaver. And it gets, I wouldn't say it gets a bad rap, but it's, it's just underappreciated. So underappreciated. Lovely. Now let's get some clean water on here and push some of this color around. Um, just open it up a little. Brighten it up a little. Remember, damp paper towel. That's giving me some wonderful effects that I like. Let's go over here and get us some highs and lows. Because I, I really did kind of put in a flat wash. adding some darkness just on the edges. I want to see what happens. I'm going to let gravity do some things there. Air current, just do some things there. I'm, I'm pushing that color. This is kind of a, a version of flooding. Pushing that color towards those kumquats. Still not touching what I did down here, except a little bit right there, just to keep it flowing. And I just want to see what it's going to do on its own. And I'm blotting, blotting, blotting of opacity there, a little scratchiness from my brush had some fluorescent yellow and some of that um, buff ivory color. Renda said she took her new hand thrown and altered water pot to paint with friends today. We all used it and they want one. Do you know if she's going to create more sometime? Yes, I know they sold out in a day. Yes, we have another um, launch coming in, April, another drop coming in April. Um, and there may be another in May as well. Uh, so we're hoping to get folks covered really well for Mother's Day. Um, so yeah, definitely more coming. Um, she really needs to make more of the gold rimmed situation. Now look at that very minimal manipulation of that color that I added there, that darkness, and it just did its thing. Now I am going to go in with my number six here. And I'm going to edit now just on the edges. I want to edit the shape of these a little bit. And as I add that color and edit, I'm going to push it back towards the center. And even go up in here where it comes right in next to the flower. A little bit of brown just for really high contrast but not bold color contrast. Mm, no, I don't like those. We're going to get rid of those. A little too early for that kind of detail. Anyway. Go back. This was the one area that I felt really needed to be edited a little, a little bit. Okay. Very nice. Keep 
questions, questions come in. Sorry, friends. I am entering a little zone here. I kind of thought I might today. I felt like yesterday it was like a whole week worth of just like craziness, chaos, creative stress, you know, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, Ava asks, would you prefer to freehand or sketch before you do something? Um, honestly, it depends on my mood. It depends on my mood. Um, today I felt like I wanted a little more control, um, a slight, a slight more realism than like a real impressionistic, you know, not that this is realistic, but it's more recognizable. Um, so it depends on my mood. Yeah. Virginia says, what a lovely surprise was organizing my desk. Turned on my laptop to see if I had, if I liked placement. So happy to catch a Christie live. Yes, I did a surprise live today. Um, Sarah says, Christy, are you releasing the silicone ones? You bet your butt I am. Let me, let me show you. Um, been using this bad boy. This is my um, well-loved already, not very well cleaned currently. Um, I took her to Philly with me this weekend. This is my collapsible double weld painter's pot. Um, it's going to be quite a bit more affordable than the ceramic ones. That is one benefit. Um, got my little logo on the bottom. It does open up to two heights. This is the height. Honestly, this is the height I've been using a lot. Um, but then it does open up if you're painting larger, like a larger area, um, it opens up to this full height so you can hold more water and you don't have to change your water as much. And, um, so I, I really like that design. I have to say this was a custom mold I had made. This is proprietary. This shape, this design doesn't exist anywhere else. I went to, I'm sure you could guess who I had designed this. Um, I'm sure you could guess it was a company that does, um, dog bowls. <laughs> I'm sure you've seen them at Target, but they're awesome. I love them so much. They've been wonderful to work with. Lots of testing, lots of tweaks. Um, I had her clipped onto my backpack this weekend. That's what the carabiner that comes with it is for so you can clip it either on the outside to save space as you're traveling um you can clip it you know to a little key you know key fob on the outside of your pack or you can clip it inside or you don't have to clip it at all um the other thing i love too is if you do want to put it inside your pack um, i would recommend it this way it can fold fold up for less space so um phenomenal I've only found so far one color. You want to hear this? I've done so much testing and I actually tested the paint puck as well, the, which I guess they'd be considered my competitor, but it's such a different product, but the one paint type and the one color that does leave some stains on the silicone is the fluorescent Hemi pink gouache. It is wild. Um, nothing else. All of this has just not been washed off. You can see. Um, but everything else washes off beautifully. But the fluorescent pink Hemi gouache seems to stain any silicone that I have applied it to. So that is what you would call. It is what it is. So yes, these are going to be released soon. Um, we can't so... We can't buy one of those double, double water bowls. Yes, you, you can. You'll be able to buy. I'm thinking we're going to launch, honestly, in um, late April, early May on these. So they're coming. They're coming. Ava asks, I got to get this answered. What tips would you give to beginner artists? Okay. Number one, I would tell you to develop some habits of being kind to yourself early on. What do I mean by that? Specifically, try to set realistic expectations as you're beginning. 
And that that is, believe it or not, a habit that you have to build for yourself. Because we naturally watch someone do something and say, well, that looks so easy. And a lot, a lot of times what gets us into a new hobby is the, well, I, I think I might be able to do that. And you can do it. But I, you, you want to set your expectations in a, in, a, in a healthy place starting out. So um, also another habit that you can develop is um, not ripping up and throwing away work that you assume is bad or you think is quote unquote bad in the beginning. Keeping all of your work because that number one, is going to be the work that you look back on to see your tremendous progress. So if you throw that work away, you'll have nothing to look back on and you won't, you'll lose perspective on your progress, right? Number two, that work can be uh, repurposed. It can be cut up and used and, and given new life in other pieces of artwork. So there's, those are the first two recommendations. The third recommendation, this is specifically if you're using watercolor, I would, tell you to get the best paper you can, um, the, the, the best paper that your budget allows, because paper, sub-quality, subpar paper, is going to inhibit your growth capacity more than anything else. I will say that until the day I meet my maker, paper is really your limiting factor. Yep. So, um, that would be my third piece of advice. Um, my fourth piece of advice, don't be afraid to share your work. Don't hide it. Share it. Be honest about it. One of the best things that I feel like one of the most limiting things you can do, and I hear it from folks all the time. They're like, my work's not ready to be, to be shown yet. Cause I'll ask somebody, they'll say, Christy, I started following your tutorials. I'm so inspired. And I'll be like, oh, show me what you're working on. And they'll be like, oh, no, my work's not ready to show yet. Well, what makes your work ready to show? What does that even mean? And what that says to me when someone says my work's not ready to show yet is that they're stuck in a fear loop, right? More than anything, what I'm hearing is I'm scared I don't think I'm going to get the approval that I want from you. And for some reason, I think I need your approval. Now, show your work from day one. Be proud of the journey you're on. All right. So those are my little bits of advice. I don't know if they're helpful. They weren't technical advice except for the paper. So um, hit me up if you want something more specific and technical. Those were more mindset um, bits of advice. But... Yeah, I'm here for you. Uh, I have to get caught up here. I have to get caught up here. You tell them, Christy. Um, uh, bah, 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 bah. Creekside Homeschooler says, I keep everything and look back at one from December 2022, and now I can see how I make it look better. So amazing, the growth. Amen and hallelujah. Yes. Um, Lil Miss Nat says, I use... Um, I like to use my bad pieces as bookmarks. I'm glad to see bad pieces in quotes. Thank you. Um, Darlene says, so clever on the double well collapsible pot. I've been using dog bowls for plain air. This will be my aw awesome in my pack. Friend, friend, friend. The whole reason I designed this bad boy is because I paint so often on plain air. And um, my water cup situation has always been my stumbling block. Because what I used to do, one of two things. Um, I used to just carry around a water bottle and literally dunk my brush in the bottle as I needed water, which was stupid and ridiculous. I wish I would have thought of the dog water bowl because that would have helped me. Um, or I, if I was like at a hotel, I would grab one of their plastic cups from the coffee bar and use that and then halfway through the day it would snap and crack and break and all the things so it's just crazy um but i am also a very light i paint i paint dark to light often so my water gets dirty so fast and so i that's why i developed the ceramic double weld pot and then i was like well i need one of these for travel and so, so the design was born, but yeah, I had to get a custom mold made. It was designed to my sketches, to my specs, 
And then of course, with the input and the advice of the manufacturer, who of course had input on like it being structurally sound, it being uh, being able to hold water and not tip over because you know it's it's um, malleable. So they were so helpful, so helpful, um, and really enjoyed working with them. All right, I'm getting in here with my number six, adding some of that beautiful like. I feel like this yellow in my set is like almost like a quinacridone gold with a little bit of like sap green in it or something. I don't know. That's how it feels to me. Um, and that's how I thought of it when I started designing. That's what I wanted it to feel like. So anywho, hopefully I was successful there. just shaping around here this kind of looks like a deviled egg but you know whatever let's shape that a little better here leading with the point of my brush whenever you lead with the point so what do I mean by that where you put the point down first but then quickly go into more pressure that means you're leading with the point the other option is that you're leading with the full kind of width of the the brush and you're not going to get that a finer point. So whenever you want detail, friends, I want you to lead with the tip of your brush. You can very quickly, you know, change that up um, and increase your pressure after you've kind of accomplished that point that you were after. But yeah, lead with your point. It's such a it's such a little nuance of brush handling that doesn't get talked about. And so here I am talking about it. All right, let's get this kind of blocked in. That was supposed to be an overlap there. So we're gonna go ahead and add some darkness. So that gives us the coverage we want to kind of correct that little mistake. And look at, I'm leading, I'm almost per fully perpendicular here. And I'm able, look at that, I'm able to get, pretty much able to get that control too much water on my brush to get all the control I'm after. There we go. Going right in between there. I'm just filling in that little that little valley between these two. All right. Let's look at questions. How are we doing team replay? What questions do you have? What's coming up? I hope you're enjoying this like just let's call it like a free paint it's like me being super indulgent treating myself to a little a little like no structure painting sesh after a crazy first day of launch yesterday hopefully you're okay with that but having a blast here so glad to have you here team replay all right and of course i mean team live bomb.com you're always so good to me like I feel like this area is like too dark a lot of darkness going on right here but I feel like I'm not gonna like address it right now because I know that once everything's wet I'm gonna want to go in here with a lot of linear detail adding um, texture adding the seeds of the um, of the figs and I can do that with some of my more opaque and creamier pastel -y watercolors so I'm not gonna like panic about that right now we do that so often in our paintings we panic before it's time we panic before we know there is actually a reason to panic and let me tell you there have been there are times in our paintings where yeah it's a little it's a little sketch right but this is not the time this is not this is the time to like let things dry let let things settle move on to another area not the time to panic so just because you've pointed out observed an area in your painting that doesn't feel quite right isn't how you would have liked it to unfold at this point it does not mean number one that it's time to fix it yet also certainly does not mean it's time to panic about it yet so that might be the most valuable piece of advice I give you today. And I've talked about it before. Move on. Don't sit in a place of frustration. 
get out of that place of frustration. Give yourself a moment to breathe and come back to it later. All right, come back to it later. Can't say that enough. I'm gonna block in this strawberry here. A little more yellow. I'm gonna go into this one, full on yellow. These are unripe. I've got four here. I don't like that, the evenness of that. If you know me, you know I like um, kind of asymmetry and odd numbers. So I'm gonna go and add in another unripe strawberry here i am going to drop in a little bit of red because we're just going to say that she's just starting to ripen it's a little muddy for my taste but i think we can i should have put the red down first but it's all right it's all right we can jazz that up with some pink i'm going to let that go see what gravity and air circulation does let's take a look at comments um, Stacy, Christy, uh, do you paint with round brushes? Um, dagger brushes are my absolute favorite. Here's my kind of my hero brush. This is the quarter inch dagger that I designed. I designed her way back, way back, way back in early 2021. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, no, I designed her in early 2020. She went into production at the end of 2020. Um, yeah, and then uh, I paint with daggers a lot. They are like my favorite. So right now I have one, two, three. Is there another? I have four daggers that I paint with, um, which I love. Um, I do like round brushes, but I need my round brush to have an elongated point for me to really be in love with it. What do I think is the best paint to use? As a beginner, let me ask, um, do you like very detailed, and this is a question from Ava, do you like very detailed paintings where there's a lot of like layers and layers and a lot of detail? Or are you more loose in modern watercolor? That would be my question back to you um, and that would help me answer that question more effectively. Gonna block this a little bit because it did get muddy sometimes i want muddy but i didn't want muddy there all right getting on to some more questions oh yeah lots of videos on paints and paper and holy moly interesting gagonia i'm hoping i'm pronouncing that right makes sense since the original sap green had quin gold uh, PO49 and PB29. Hmm. Mm, did I reveal something there? Um, hey, Jadex. So glad you're here. Thank you. Sarah, amazing question. What was the one skill you learned that took your art to the next level? Let me tell you what. In college, oh, I love this question. Mm -hmm. Um, I was taking an oil painting class in college. Uh, or I'm sorry. Nope, this was a different story. I was taking a figure drawing. It was a freshman year. And um, we were doing, usually it's like figure drawing. They make you do charcoal and it's just, it's very, very stuffy and formal and specific and traditional, right? But she was letting us um, use whatever medium we wanted for a time. And I was so excited because, you know, I was like the, the self-professed queen of watercolor from my hometown. And um, I was using watercolor and she came over and I had done this whole like nude um, of this uh, dark skinned man, beautiful man. And he just had the most beautiful skin tone. It was lovely. And I had done all of these just perfect like fills, ombre, washes, like gradients, okay, if you will, with watercolor, light to dark and molding and sculpting all these muscles, but it was all very just washes, almost like if I had done a whole painting kind of like this plum, even with like, imagine this texture here and here being gone. It was lovely. 
and she said that she came over she said christy this is gorgeous and it's clear that you have great water control and great brush handling skills but she's like i need i want to see brush strokes i want to see um enthusiasm on the paper i want to know that you're enthusiastic by the brush strokes right now i kind of feel like i want to fall asleep it's a peaceful sleep she said but i kind of feel like i want to fall asleep and i was like i was a little offended not gonna lie i was like what? i didn't say that to her but like in my head i'm like what do you mean because i honestly didn't know what she meant because this is how i had always painted watercolor a lot of just smooth washes when i thought of brush strokes i thought of impressionism and monet and manet and and mary cassatt and all the things but not watercolor right and so i started exploring brush strokes in wet and wet and wet on dry and what that did and how i could sculpt and form but with brush strokes so imagine like the watercolor paintings you've seen let me actually show you one there goes my chair this is a great example um, this is one of the paintings that I'm doing for the free one hour painting course that comes with the purchase of your new brush set. And I, I, I walk you through this painting. But these brush strokes down here, these were created into a damp surface. They were created using this brush. And I kind of was doing this, like little curves with pigment, with paint on my brush, back and forth, back and forth. But they were strokes. I wasn't trying to make a smooth transition or an ombre, I was actually stroking the page. And so that was the biggest lesson I learned, friends, um, is to harness, and that was what took my art to the next level, because I was like a one trick pony at that point, right? And so I was able to harness the, the idea of creating texture with my brush and using brush strokes to develop form instead of just ombre and gradients to develop form that definitely is what took me to the next level um yes you do have permission to sell a painting you did along with me absolutely um question Brenda, thank you for helping me get to 100k i appreciate you so much um okay mystical misty one says i'm grateful for your channel i've been going through a rough time lately and painting has gotten me through these times it's been amazing thank you sarah as well um thank you tangible tangible tanya for the boob i'll, I'll tell you what mystical misty um you know i've been painting my my whole life it feels like since i was six mm. sorry i needed a drink holy moly and but when my art really reawakened and when my art really became my art was in 2013 and you know what what the catalyst was for that it was i went through one of the i basically had a breakdown i went through the one of the hardest times in my life and the difficult part with that is that there was no actual catalyst for it it was um you know just generalized anxiety um and but it was just one of the most terrifying and strange and foreign experiences of my life. And it happened during a really long, like four month long dry spell. I, I literally don't think I painted anything for myself. I was doing like commission work because I had to, but yeah. And, um, I found myself in those months to follow because I just started painting. For myself, I just started putting brush to paper, not caring what it looked like. And my road back to what I thought was the road I was on was I want to get happy again. And that's when I discovered the very, very real and powerful difference between joy and happiness. And that's when I realized that watercolor is the kind of joy when you get in that flow state that I call it the joy state. When you get in the joy state, no one can touch you nothing can touch you and maybe that joy state only lasts for a few minutes at a time but man it is replenishing refreshing and reinvigorating is that even a word but yes so thank you for sharing <laughs> oh it's getting really close to 100k i want to be here to see it my obsession started around 94 oh so you're new okay 
Hi, you're new. Uh, Little Miss Nat says, question, how can I keep from going overboard with um, highlights? I barely leave any unpainted areas, not by choice. <clears throat> well, it sounds to me like you are really wanting to use the white of your paper as your highlights or at least lighter application areas of paint as your highlights. Um, and if that is the case, then I would highly recommend just really um, challenging yourself to paint very, 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 very light washes and build up slowly. It doesn't mean you have to stay there forever. It doesn't mean that that has to be your style forever, but challenging yourself to paint that way for a time will teach you a lot and help you to kind of rebuild some habits. Um, I tend to paint um, and apply paint in a way that just feels good. And often that can be darker. I kind of reverse it, right? So if you're following along with me, you might be painting that way too. But what might be really beneficial for you is to kind of like develop a new habit, go back to the traditional way, which is building color up light to dark and getting a feel for that restraint of leaving some of those light areas and creating some of those light areas. Like for example, I'm doing it right here with the fluorescent, um, leaving some white space. I left some whites here. Um, I pulled back on some of these greens here to reveal some high spots. I've got a lot of high spots here, but that comes with you know, with practice and with with restraint, especially when you can get such glorious, beautiful effects by applying dark colors, color everywhere, intensity everywhere. But yes, you can go overboard. So hopefully that helps. Just catching up on questions. Yes, lots of links in the description below. Absolutely. All right, now I want to evaluate a little bit. I feel like I'm going to get these leaves in. Just a little bit of a the green that was already on my palette, but with a little blue added will do ya. I think I'm going to use that same blue in these strawberry tapas. All right, I've got some weird like, you know, kumquats coming out of absolutely flipping nowhere. It's all right, it's all right. I'm gonna go add a second layer here to some of these. I'm using three quarter inch I'm making sure I'm, I'm double rinsing a lot now to make sure my colors stay clean. I'm just swiping across the addition of that color to create a little ombre effect here. Get some texture in these. I don't want smoothness right now I want texture and weirdness so I'm gonna get it I'm gonna get it I'm gonna get it rinse blend dab Ooh. rinse blend dab All right, let's get some stems going up on these kumquats. I feel like I need that in place to get a sense of where I want to go next. Using the eighth inch dagger just to truly block some of these in. Some of these angles aren't exactly where they're going to end up being, but I just want to get a sense of that structure what's going on here and definitely what the heck is going on here maybe just more strawberries maybe some a nice big conglomeration of unripe strawberries 
you know when they're unripe they're they're oddly shaped they're not their full like strawberry shape let's get those in here i think that'll be pretty um love the colors thank you suzanne yes brush links are in the description they are but friends know that the original brush set is not currently available it is sold out so if that is the one you're seeking don't get frustrated don't feel like you're missing something it's it's going to take you to a page of just all other brushes right now um because it is sold out sharpening some of these the way that they overlapped with the green got a little weird so I am going dark to kind of mend that Yeah. Whew, okay. So what else? What else? These are kind of odd up here. Maybe we need another big, well, a little bit smaller than this one. Strawberries are kind of just like misshapen hearts, I've realized. I think we overcomplicate it, right? Anybody ever feel like that? I'm gonna go in pink, leave some white of the page. Go in pink on these. Oh, that was stronger than I thought it would be based on what I thought I had on my brush. Really light. I keep forgetting how intense this bright pink is in my palette, clearly. making sure y'all can hear me yeah it cut out my sound too yeah we got it back i think we got it back did we get it back should have gotten it back it's back good Ooh, all right friends Rewind a bit, your video, your audio will come back. 
Yay! All right. I'm just going to go in with my liner. I feel like I just want a little bit of a breather from all of the filling, the color, and the heaviness that can happen. Is that damp? Actually, maybe I don't want the liner. I think I want this. I think I'm going to spray this, mist this area ever so lightly. Because I know what I'm after. And I'm not going to get it if the page isn't a little bit damp. I want a diffused little bit of detail. I'm ready for it. I'm using my quarter inch dagger. Curved edge down. Oh, yeah. Some of that over here. blue on the edge here. See how that's diffusing that detail ever so slightly. Love that. Oh man, excuse me. I just want to block in some of these stems very loosely. I think that's going to help me figure out what I want to do next. Remember, sometimes in your painting, you've got to just do the basic. You're building a house. You got to put up the frame. You got to get some of the boring stuff in so you know where you're going and so you have a foundation on which to build, on which to do all the flourishes and fun stuff, right? You can't start, can't start hanging pictures on the wall if you don't got no walls. Wow, that was, that was something. That was something, Christy Rice. Yeah, it was. Woo. A little bit of liner, a little bit of liner. I'm going to mist her down too. That's another reason I adore this new spray bottle. Because it uh, gives you this gorgeous fine mist. You're not getting like water droplets. Mm, love it. I'm taking just a little bit of brown on my brush and I'm going into the little nooks and crannies and scrubbing in. It almost doesn't look brown. It just looks like a deep, deep, deep shadow that adds depth and interest. It's allowing me the opportunity to kind of define the pollen in the middle. It's pollen, right? Am I saying that properly? It really doesn't even look like a color. It just looks like deep, intense, delicious shadow. I'm talking about that area right there. Ooh, Lordy. Good fun. It's another use for a liner brush that you may not have even thought. Um, oh, I don't know if, I think I thought I linked the spray bottle, but now I'm questioning myself. Friends, I will link that spray bottle um, 
in my Amazon shop for sure right after this. I promise. I promise. A little bit of that darkness. And then I'm going to take this eighth inch dagger and go right next to it and blend it out. A little bit of contrast detailing to make some of these pop. I'm not going to blend too far because I don't want it to look like a heavy shadow. I'm blending and then lifting and blotting and rinsing. Blending and lifting, blotting and rinsing. I don't want to carry down this darkness to kind of change the color of the kumquat. I'm just wanting it to be a shadow and I can even push back. Push back and blend and lift and rinse and blot and all the things, all right? Is hopefully that makes sense. But you see the kind of depth and dimension you're gonna get there by doing that kind of thing. And that's pretty intense. You don't have to go that intense. You could have gone in with a darker orange but I am a little more bold in what I do. <clears throat> so let me show you that kind of, that kind of way of doing things, but instead of just with that really dark color, just taking a darker orange and doing the same thing and creating your shadow, right? And there you have it. Let me do some of that up here get your definition between these two kumquats and rinse and back it in with some water on your brush this needs to be a little more round right. and you've got your definition back it in if you don't want that color blended up as far back her in Bag it in, bag it in. There we go. So same approach, less intense. All right. Good fun, good fun, friends. Good fun. This is good fun. Keep hitting me up with comments, questions. Um, I'm going to pop some videos up on the screen that you might want to watch next. This is for Team Replay. I thank you so much for being with me. I'm going to take a look through uh, the questions that I didn't get to and try to answer those, friends. Uh, but this has been such a blast. Thank you for hanging with me as I indulged a little bit of me time with painting. Thank you for all your incredible questions, your thoughtful questions. And uh, thank you for, you know, being along this journey, getting to 100K. But honestly, I don't really care about 100K. I care about you. I care about this community. And I care about you finding lasting joy that you can harness and access anytime you want. That's what we're here for. So friends, until next time, I wish you loads of happy painting.